Hey guys, so as I promised uh, in my response video to Nikocado Avocado recently, uh, I'm going to talk about DHA since it is one of the nutrients that uh, people are often concerned about when discussing or following vegan diets. So first off, what is DHA? DHA is one of three omega-3 fatty acids, the other two being ALA and EPA. ALA is uh, what we consume. It's found in various plant foods. It's find, found in high amounts in foods like chia seeds and flax seeds and hemp seeds and walnuts. Unlike ALA, which is an essential nutrient, EPA and DHA are non-essential nutrients. And that's because we can get them from uh, the ALA that we consume. So in other words, our bodies essentially produce it. And they do that by converting um, ALA to EPA and then to DHA. And there's actually some retro conversion, conversion back from DHA to EPA. Unfortunately, while ALA is efficiently converted to EPA, it may require large amounts of ALA to produce optimal amounts of DHA. So what do the vegan experts, the doctors and the dietitians, what do they say? What do they recommend? Do they recommend to take a DHA supplement? Do they recommend to just eat larger amounts of ALA, again, of foods like walnuts and chia seeds, um, to then allow our bodies to produce enough DHA? What do they say? Well, unfortunately, the answer is not as clear cut as it is with something like B12, which is just take a supplement, right? Across the board, take a supplement, unless you're listening to certain super, super nutty <laughs> vegan uh, doctors that recommend not supplementing because you can get B12 from the air and things like that. No, for the most part, uh, most of the, again, dietitians and doctors, they recommend to take a B12 supplement. Unfortunately, again, uh, DHA, it's just not that clear cut. The whole story about DHA remains complicated and poorly understood. No one knows for certain whether or not vegans would benefit from having a source of DHA in their diet. And algae-derived supplements, the only DHA source for vegans, are expensive. Even getting a blood test done to see if you are deficient in DHA or EPA is not very helpful. People who don't eat fish tend to have lower blood levels of DHA and EPA. But does it matter? That's the big question. DHA and EPA may help protect against chronic disease, but the research on this is very conflicting. And even if they offer some protection, it's not clear that people who are already eating a healthy vegan diet need that protection. So we know that vegans and vegetarians have lower levels of EPA and DHA if they are not supplementing for these nutrients. And we know that supplementing with these nutrients via an algae-based supplement raises these levels. What we don't know is how much this matters or if it even matters at all, because we don't know what adequate levels of EPA and DHA are, only what normal omnivore levels are. So again, what do the experts say? Well, I'm going to rely on the experts that I rely on. As I mentioned in this video, finding credible vegan doctors, dietitians, experts, whatever. Uh, the ones who I rely on for various reasons that I mentioned in that video are Jack Norris, veganhealth.org, and Jenny Messina, theveganrd.com. They are both vegan registered dietitians. So uh, Norris on his website says, if you want your DHA levels to be the same as non-vegetarians, supplementing with 300 milligrams per day will likely accomplish that. If you just want some insurance that you are getting a source of DHA in case your body isn't efficient at making it, supplementing with 200 to 300 milligrams every two to three days will provide that. Ginny Messina says, consider a supplement that provides 300 milligrams of DHA and EPA combined two or three times per week. So as you can see, very, very similar recommendations. And both agree that everyone should consume ALA regardless whether or not you are taking a DHA or an EPA supplement. Norris does suggest limiting ALA intake due to the possible uh, association between higher intakes and eye problems like cataracts. However, the studies finding ALA to be linked with eye problems were all done on only one population by one group of researchers measuring intakes rather than blood levels. I consider it likely that further studies will show inconsistencies, and until plant and or uncooked sources of ALA are examined, I am skeptical that uncooked plant sources of ALA are harmful to the eye. 
Finally, there are some important exceptions here, uh, exceptions for pregnant women, uh, women who are breastfeeding, and children, all of whom should supplement with DHA. So in other words, unless you are pregnant or breastfeeding or a child, probably not that last one, unless you are one of those three, until more research is done, it's really just up to you whether or not you want to supplement uh, for DHA or for EPA. But the really important thing is that there is no reason to think that we need to rely on fish either way. Because again, if you want to supplement, algae-based uh, DHA and EPA supplements are available. And with that, I will get to expense, because as I mentioned earlier, quoting Jenny Messina, um, she said part of the problem too is that these supplements tend to be expensive. And I have found that uh, recently they have gone down in price, probably because there are more options now. You know, you used to have a couple of um, vegan companies like Deva that sold them, but now there are quite a few options. I've even seen one, um, I forgot the brand, but I've even seen it in Kroger, which is pretty cool. So I just went to Amazon and checked out uh, the prices on some of these. So the DHA, the uh, Deva brand, as I already mentioned, is $25 for 90 capsules, each one containing 200 milligrams of DHA. So that works out to, if you were taking one of these a day, that works out to less than 30 cents per day. I mean, yeah, it's more expensive than like a multi or B12 tablets, but those are incredibly, incredibly cheap. But you know, to me, 30 cents a day is still really cheap. And if you are taking it every other day as the one of Norris's recommendations, if you just want some extra insurance, then it's even cheaper. And if you do want to supplement for both DHA and EPA, uh, Nordic Naturals has one again on Amazon for $41 for 120 capsules uh, containing 390 milligrams of DHA and 195 milligrams of EPA. And that works out to about 34 cents per day if you're taking a capsule per day. So now what I do, uh, since I am breastfeeding, I do supplement for DHA. I do take 200 milligrams of DHA every day. I did the same thing while I was pregnant as well. Um, and EPA I do not supplement for, and that's because I do consume a fair amount of ALA, usually in the form of canola oil and walnuts, um, like canola oil on popcorn I've mentioned before, very delicious. We air pop the popcorn and then put the canola oil on. It's really, really good. And um, walnuts usually in like, you know, oatmeal or that smoothie, that giant high calorie protein smoothie that I make. Um, so the EPA is coming um, at least some from the ALA. Again, ALA is converted to DPAs. E EPA, so I'm getting some there. There is DPA as well. Um, and then, like I mentioned, there is retro conversion from DHA from EPA. And again, I am supplementing for DHA. So that's why I personally don't supplement for EPA. And as far as consuming higher amounts of ALA and eye problems, um, I'm also skeptical, like Jack Norris, that this is actually going to turn out to be a thing, <laughs> to be a problem. Um, and if the, there is, if there is a higher risk for cataracts, if that does turn out to be true, um, cataract surgery is pretty simple, pretty simple outpatient procedure. So not really something I'm concerned about. So that's it. That's really it on DHA, all the, the relevant stuff. It kind of amuses me that people, um, I've seen a lot where people, this is the sticking point for them when it comes to veganism is, is DHA. And I don't know, you know, today with the amount of algae based supplements that there are, there are really quite a few that I saw on Amazon. Again, I've even seen them at Kroger now and the price really coming down to the point where, you know, I, we're pretty frugal and I, I don't consider that that much of an expense, particularly if you're taking one every other day, it's pretty cheap. So I don't know. I'm just kind of confused what the, what the sticking point is there. If you're worried about it, just take the supplement. It's not really that big of a deal. I don't know. It's not that big of a deal. Um, of course I was never a big fish either, either. So for me, I mean, even if, even if I weren't vegan, <laughs> I would still take these because fish is disgusting and also fish oil supplements are disgusting. I remember taking those years and years ago and oh my God, burping up that shit is not fun. So I burp up the Deva and I taste lemon. All right, great. So um, yeah, that's it. 
Hope you enjoyed this. If you have any comments or questions, of course, leave them down below. And if you want to subscribe, subscribe, and I will have a new video very soon.